This episode of McCall's Quilting Quilt Along is brought to you by BetterTex, fabric for quilters by quilters. Hi, and welcome back to the McCall's Quilting Glorietta Quilt Along. I'm Laura Roberts, and I have been traveling through this lovely adventure with you, and we have gotten to play with beautiful fabrics and learn how to handle bias so it's on our side. I hope you've had a really good time, because I certainly have, and the quilt is just amazing. So I'm going to finish up with you things you need to know about finishing your quilt. So one thing I'm going to finish with first is how to get that binding fastened to itself. You come all the way around and then what do you do? Okay, you look at your tails and you invariably are gonna have a long tail and you know, the one you started with. Okay, I am checking to see if I have any seams because I don't wanna try and connect the two ends right where I have a seam. So I know I don't have one here at the tail end. And let's look over here. Okay, that's, ooh, look at that. That's right there. I know I don't want that in the middle of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna start with that. Okay, just cutting that away. There, it's out of here. Now, what you're going to do, you need to overlap the tails. And whatever width you used for your original strip, in my case, I used a two and a quarter inch strip. That's what you're wanting to do. You need to have an overlap of two and a quarter inches. Well, this is awfully close to that end. I really don't want it that close. So I'm just gonna trim this one off a little bit first. Okay, because if you're working in the middle between these two areas, it makes it easier. And also, you've noticed that I stopped stitching when I was still a good 10 inches away. So, okay, I've got a ruler here, and I've got another ruler here. And what I'm going to do, I'm using this more as a, just a hard surface than anything. Uh, I have, I'm laying these two pieces, one over the other like that, and I need to measure two and a quarter inches down, okay? So let's see, where are we? I'll hold that, hold that, and lay over. Okay, so here's this ruler. I can see this little tail underneath here. Do you see that little sticking out part? I'm gonna measure two and a quarter inches down from there. So I have my ruler in place, it's aligned with the fold in the, um, in the binding. And I'm just going to draw a line here. Okay, that's going to tell me where to cut that one. Alrighty, so I'm cutting that one right there. There we go. And now it's a matter of connecting these guys and connecting them in the right direction. I have many, many, many times sewn it together and then gone, oh, I did it wrong. It's in the wrong direction. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to end up moving your quilt around, kind of trying to get out of the way so you can bring these two things together, your tails. Sit. There we go. And I'm going to open up both these ends because what I'm going to do is sew them together with a diagonal seam just like you did when you were sewing the strips together to make the binding in the first place. Now the big trick here, this is gonna sound really silly, is to make sure that when you sew it together, you're going to end up with it being in the same direction. Okay, if you do it incorrectly, this is incorrectly. And you know why? Because you're not right sides together. You have to be right sides together. Okay, so now you know you have to right sides together. We'll put him down like that. Okay, and try to get this to cooperate. There's that. And now I'll bring this one over. Okay, right sides together. That looks like it should work. Well, I'm gonna test it first before I actually sew. I'm just gonna run some pins in here as though I've sewn a seam. And then see if when it's all folded, if it comes out right. Okay, so it's basically there's my seam. I'm gonna fold where I sewed like that. And if that's all sewn, oh, what's the matter with that? It's twisted. Aha. Uh -huh. That's why you try it with pins before you stitch it. Okay, so what's the right way to do it? Well, this guy's lying like that. We know he needs to be right sides together. So I'm gonna put him like that. Okay? Now right sides together with this could be like that, or it could be like that. Okay. So let's pin this one 
and see if it works. Again, we're putting this at that same 90 degree angle that you put your strips at when you were initially sewing them together. There are a lot of different ways to do this. This is the way that works for me because I find it easier to stitch a line here than, you know, some, some methods have you cut that so you have a quarter inch seam allowance, allowance. I just find that more difficult. It's an individual thing. You have to find out what works for you. Oh, there we go. Do you see how that's going to look? Whoop! We have found the right direction. Okay, <clears throat> so now that I know which way is the right way, I want to draw a diagonal line that goes from there to there on this piece. So I don't want to forget the orientation. I'm just going to pin that guy there. Okay, and I know that if I draw my line and put it there, it's going to be right. Okay? So, oops, put you down there. There you go. And I'm going to get my little square ruler. Now remember, it's two and a quarter inches wide, which I already know. And I'm going to put that line, that 45 degree angle line of the ruler on the edge right there. And I'm going to slide it until right over here the ruler meets that corner, just like that. And I'm going to draw a line. That's going to be my stitching line if I did it in the right direction. Maybe I should have gone like that. So I'm going to check again. I know it seems silly to check over and over again, but I have done it wrong too many times. OK, so I'm just going to do a quick little pinning to see if it's right. OK, now let's see if we pin that together like that. Oh, good. It's still the right way. Now I'm going to actually sew. Uh, since I'm actually going to sew it, I'm going to pin it well, <clears throat> which means aligning corners and edges, just like you would with any piecing. Okay, I've got that there. And I'm just going to do, I think I'll pin across the stitching line like that. And then over here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm aligning those two right there like that, and I'm going to stitch from there to there. Okay, so over to the machine, we'll see how it goes. All righty, so I'm, oops, right sides together, make sure I've got that all up. This is the awkward part, <clears throat> and it's super awkward when you've got a big quilt, but it's just the way it is. The longer the tails you leave, the uh, less awkward it is. But if your tails get too long, it gets a little imprecise. So you're going to find the happy medium that works for you. And I'm stitching directly on that line, not a quarter of an inch to either side, just on that line. Oops. And I didn't take out my pin. Bad me. Oh well. These things happen. Okay. Now, I'm going to snip that. I'm going to move my and we'll come back over here and let's lay this out. Oh, hooray, look at that. Now I still need to trim away the excess and that's of course whatever is to the outside that isn't on the side where your strips are. And I'm just gonna cut that off like that. If you want to, you can take an iron here and press that open little seam allowance. <clears throat> and of course, I've got this padded fabric here, so I'm not going to feel too guilty about, I'm not going to get heat onto the desk surface or the table surface. But you could, of course, put a little pad under it. There. It's open like the rest of them. And I'll get those threads out of here. And just get that nice and flat. And I'm going to press it. Now that it's in place, I want to make sure that that fold is back the way it's supposed to be. OK, like that. There we go. And now I'm going to take it back to the machine and finish sewing it on. You know, I'm really liking this combination of brown and lavender. Very pretty. And if you happen to be a uh, Harry Potter fan, you know who Lavender Brown is. 
Okay, so I'm just bringing this, making sure that the fold is where I want it. Just easy, I'm making sure the edges are aligned. There we go. And I'm just gonna go right on over that first little bit of stitching. There you go. Okay, cut off the threads. Come over here and cut off the threads. And now it's time to turn the binding to the back of the quilt and stitch it down. There are a couple ways you can do that. You can do it with a, just a, like a hem stitch, a blind hem stitch. Some people will actually machine it in place. And I can talk about that. But I'm going to do something else first. I'm just going to trim a tiny bit away from those corners. Not a lot, because I want that corner to still have a miter, which means it needs something inside it to uh, keep that shape. But on the other hand, there's a whole lot going on in the corners. And I don't want them to be sticking out you know, like a sore thumb on all sides. Okay, not much trimming at all. And now I'm going to turn it to the back, to the wrong side, like this. You bring it over. There's the edge. From You can, if you want, you can uh, press it from the front first. But you're just going to bring that over, and you want to make sure you're covering that stitching line. First of all, you wouldn't use green on brown, but this way you can see it. You want to make sure you're covering that stitching line, okay? And what you can do, if you want to machine this in place, you can pin this along here, like that, just uniformly. You want it to be the same width all the way along, like that. Okay. And what I would do at this point, I would grab a glue stick or even a a little bit of Elmer's glue, and I would put a little glue right along here, the underside of that, put it there, pin it in place, and by the time I've gone all the way around, that glue will have set. And the reason I'm doing that is because in order to stitch on it from the top, which is what I'm going to have to do to make it look nice, I won't be able to see the pins. So if you put a little glue stick there and, and uh, go ahead and pin all the way around, it'll be dry by the time you get back. The other thing you can do is take a very narrow strip of fusible web, and you can apply that right there, peel off the paper, bring that over, press it down, and you'll have fusible web holding it. Okay, so if I have that all pinned down all the way around, I can come from the front and stitch in the ditch right along there, right where I sewed that binding on, and it's gonna catch it on the back. It won't necessarily catch it on the edge, it probably won't, it might, depending on how wide your binding was to begin. But you want to make sure, of course, that this is far enough out. And so if it stitches it right along there, you can choose how you want that to be. Perhaps you're going to use a decorative stitch with your machine. And right along there, it could be very pretty right along that edge, and that would catch the entire area from here to here. Okay. When you get to a corner, <clears throat> remember we mitered the corners? Well. What that means is that when you turn it to the back side, you're going to have a, a very pretty diagonal fold, like that. When it's turned to the back, do you see that diagonal fold? And of course, you can work it until you get it looking just the way you want to. But there we go. See how that looks? And on the back, you're just going to create the same thing on the back by pinning one side down or securing it in some fashion. There are these really cool things called binder clips, um, binding clips that are like the kind of, they're the kind, of, they kind of slide on and they have the quarter inch measurement on them and they come in all different colors of the rainbow and they're fabulous. Um, so what you would do though is you're going to fasten that one side first and then very similarly to the, to the way you initially made your miters on the front, you're going to put something like an awl right at the raw edge there and fold that over. And then you work with it until you have it looking pretty, until that diagonal looks like that. You see? So you have a diagonal in the front, 
diagonal on the back. It's very tidy. That's what mitering does for you. And you just stitch it down on the back and on the front, you have a beautiful binding. So binding isn't hard at all uh, once you know how, and it can be very satisfying. Like I told you, it is for some people. Okay, real quick, let's talk about other things to do with finishing. For instance, <clears throat> once your quilt is finished, the quilt top, you need to get it quilted or quilt it yourself. And that means you need to layer it with batting and backing and um, <clears throat> decide what you want to use for both those things. For backing, I so strongly recommend that you use quilter's cotton just like you used on the front of the quilt. If you're using a lesser grade of cotton, it's going to shrink more. And so when your quilt finally gets washed, it's going to be kind of ripply. It'll pull it up on, on the back, and it won't ever lay flat. Um, also, if you're going to be hand quilting, you don't want to use something like a sheet. So, you know, you can use a sheet on the back of your quilt as a backing if it's the same weight and density as the fabric you've used on the front. You know, sometimes a sheet is a great way to go. If you find a sheet at a thrift store that's in good shape and it's the same weight and quality as your cottons on the front, you can use it. But it's harder to needle through, just like batiks are harder to needle through. So if you're going to hand quilt, you want to kind of give that test it a little bit before you buy it. Okay, when it comes to um, <clears throat> battings, battings, you can get cotton battings, you can get poly cotton blends, wool, soy, uh, silk, and there are even battings made from recycled plastic bottles. I don't know that that would be for me, but you can get it. And there are bamboo battings, and they all have different characteristics. I could go on about this forever, but if you do a little research online, you can find out the different qualities, and you know what matters to you. Some battings are naturally um, flame resistant, like wool. Wool is naturally uh, flame resistant, and so is bamboo. So you're going to want to take a look at the different things that matter to you. If you're making a children's quilt, if you're making a quilt that's going to be in the car and just get trashed, you don't want to spend a lot of money on it, you might want to get a polyester batting. And polyester is very easy to needle through if you're hand quilting. So there are all these different things to consider when you're looking for a batting. Okay. And one other thing to look, when you look at the packaging on the batting, it's going to tell you things like, what is it made of? It should tell you how far away, how far apart you can quilt it. Can you quilt 10 inch apart lines or do you have to quilt four inches apart? It's how much quilting has to be in there. And you can also look at things like whether it has scrim. Scrim is, is a layer, it's sort of, it's a, it's a, maybe feels a little rough. You're not going to feel it when you have it in the quilt. But what it is is a, a sort of an adhesive that keeps the, all the fibers together. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what matters to you. So do a little research in batting and find out which one you want. And just so you know, you can also get batting in gray and black. If you have a really dark quilt, I truly recommend a darker batting. Because if you have a white batting inside a black gray quilt, it shows. It starts coming up. You, it sounds crazy, but you can see it. So those are a few things to think about. Um, another little tip about backings. If you have a quilt, let's say you have a quilt that's 90 inches square, OK? You don't have to buy three lengths of fabric. You're thinking to yourself, maybe, OK, 40 inches wide, 40 inches wide, oh, and I still have 10 inches. Well, what I would do, if I know I need an additional 10 inches, I would take that 90 inches and divide it by four, because I can get 10 inches. I can get four strips 10 inches wide across the width. So 90 divided by four, what is that? Um, somewhere around, what, 23? 92, that's close enough. And I would buy another three quarters of a yard of fabric. I would cut four strips lengthwise. That gives me four lengths that are 10 inches wide. You would want 10 and a half, of course, because you're piecing. 10 inches wide and 23 inches long. I'd stitch them all together. And then I would have one strip in the middle that was pieced. So I put my 40 inches wide here and 40 inches wide here and that piece strip up the middle. And of course, when I'm talking about 90 inches square, I'm talking about 90 inches square backing and batting, which means that the quilt itself is going to be 82 inches or less, the quilt top. You have to have 
four inches or more of batting and backing around the entire top, sticking out from the top in order to quilt it easily. And especially if you want a long arm quilter to quilt it for you, you must have that four inches because they have to attach it to the various rollers. So as to long armors, the best way to find a good long armor is to ask your friend, your, you know, your quilting friends. You can go into your local quilt shops too and say, do you know who in the, in the neighborhood is a good long arm quilter? And they can give you a number of people, I'm sure. And you can call the actual long arm person. A lot of them already have batting. Then you don't have to buy batting because they have it on big rolls. They'll tell you how far apart they can stitch their design. They'll tell you how big of a piece of backing you need, given the needs of their machine and the size of your top. And they can talk prices, whether you want custom or an all over design. So um, ask questions. You can find out what you need to know, and they would much rather talk to you about something beforehand than when you pick up the quilt and you're not happy. OK, on this quilt behind me, on the great and beautiful Glorietta quilt, there's some really interesting quilting that I just wanted to <clears throat> touch base with you on how there are geom there's geometric quilting and um, flowers. And so, for instance, in this, in this center part, there's a flower that goes out to here. So this becomes a big flower, it's lovely. And then these areas are stitched in the ditch. And when you come over to this, the, you know, the grand uh, corners where you don't have a sawtooth star, but it looks like you do, where you have, oops, they're missing a piece, but where you have these four off-white squares meeting in the middle. Well, from a distance, if you look at that quilt, it just looks like one white square. It's the perfect place to put a beautiful flower or a small feathered wreath. And that's what's happened here. And what's really interesting to me, the quilter who did that quilt treated this like a four patch. And so the quilting, it's in the ditch. And of course, there's no ditch there, but it looks like there is, like that. And then geometrically, it went in like this and like this and like this, making this a square. You know, who thought of that? And there are in this section, <clears throat> Excuse me. There are lovely half flowers stitched along here. And um, I think it goes like this, and then like this, and like this, and like this. There are so many options. So when you go out and get your long armor, take the time to look at the patterns she has. Maybe you have some ideas of your own. And of course, if you're hand quilting, you'll want to transfer your pattern. You'll know how to do that if you're a hand quilter. Um, and if you're brave, a lot of people quilt their own quilts at home on their own machine. So that's something that you can look up online. There are, there's so many people who are helping out with information on that. Um, and finally, last thing, label your quilt. You're going to wish you had 30, 40 years from now if you don't. You won't remember, that. what was the name of that again? Hmm. So <clears throat> the thing you want on a label, who made it, when it was made, and if it was a gift for somebody, you would like to say made for, and in this case, you might want to say um, the Glorietta McCall's Quilting Glorietta Quilt Along with uh, Benertex fabrics from the Ribbon Floral Collection. You can put on whatever you want. And speaking of Benertex fabrics, if you don't have your quilt, uh, your quilt kit, if you don't have these fabrics, go to McCall'sQuilting.com slash quilt along. And if you're lucky, there will be a kit or two left. I have no idea if there will be, but you know, give it a shot. And I think that that uh, just about covers it. So thank you so much for coming along with me on this fabulous journey through beautiful fabrics. I love having your company, and it's really fun for me to do this. So thank you again for joining me. I hope you'll join me again for another quilt along. And I hope you love your quilt, because it's gorgeous. Thanks again. Have a wonderful time finishing your quilt. This episode of McCall's Quilting Quilt Along is brought to you by Bannertex, fabric for quilters by quilters.